Hey, Mike here with Mike's Bags, and today I'm reviewing the Sicario by Killshot. Brand new bag by Sicario, or brand new bag by Killshot. Uh, in fact, according to their website, it's, they've actually developed, they worked in developing these materials. Brand two brand new materials and a very unique fill in there, so it's a completely different bag. Um, and, and I think it's a bag that some people are going to love, some people are going to hate. I'll get into that here in a moment. But start with the design, as always. First time I saw this bag, I immediately thought of the Costello. Here it is. You got the skull, you got the roses, you got the guns, a very similar look. Uh, I'm not saying they copied this bag at all, I'm just saying it's, it's got a lot of similarities to it. I love the look of this bag. I think this bag looks great as well. They also have one that's kind of, I don't know, psychedelic, has the skull with some mushrooms growing out. Similar to the 710 Amnesia, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and then a few other designs. I don't know what the standard design is, but all the designs they have, I think are looking pretty good. I like the designs of them. They are ACL Pro stamped. It's a carpet style bag, so there's no design on the back of them. Um, We'll get into the materials here. Again, very unique materials. So I'm gonna kind of explain to you what I think these are comparable to and how they feel and stuff. Give, do my best to tell you what, what we're going, what we have here. This this carpet side. So it looks just looking at it without touching it, looking at it, it reminds me a lot of the the Black Sheep OG2 carpet, the um, Contraband Combat, the Gravity Neptune, the 724, the Project 1323 carpet. Uh, but I got a Project 23 here. This this carpet, kind of that tight weave carpet it looks like that however when you go to feel it it's not as soft as this carpet it's it's it feels closer to a bg viking so you've got that viking feel but it's definitely a tighter smaller weave than the than the viking um it's not a real thick carpet it, it, it's it's fairly thin but it's not a again not a soft carpet almost has a plasticky feel to me like, like it was made out of recycled plastics or something i don't I, i'm just speculating i don't know that's kind of what it feels like it doesn't feel unpleasant at all and it, it's it's not a thin but it's not a real thick carpet i don't think there's a liner in it, it doesn't feel like any kind of liner in it. So it feels like the, the the beads are right against this material here it plays slow five uh, they call it a five a five speed on the back they give you the speeds here five eight they call it a five speed i think the website says a four and a half so right on that range four and a half to five fast four slow five i'll call it a five um, just just to make it simple fast side again a unique material but when I first kind of felt this and started playing with it it reminds me a lot of that game changer material the you know the surefire fast side a lot of companies are using that material not the same but it feels similar to it and it plays a lot like it again it's it's not a neither way's materials are very soft but they have kind of that that I say plasticky and I don't want that to be a negative it's not a negative it's just a little bit different than a typical cloth type material um again not unpleasant so you're looking at an eight speed five eight on these two materials here uh template size this is kind of i think it's a medium template it, it's not it's not a large it's not a small it's kind of that sweet spot template size fill it's it's on the fuller side not crazy folks on the fuller side but what's unique is this resin is actually like a almost like a small bb it's like a bb fill really round pellet in there uh, i do know dragon bags uses round fill in their bags but theirs is a little bit bigger. This is a much smaller. Like I said, it, it, it's almost the size of a BB before I can tell. It gives the bag like a, almost feels like a gel. It's a very fluid feel. Like, like this, the feel just kind of moves. It, 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 it's not clunky. It's very smooth the way it moves. Like I said, it feels like there's a, like there's a gel in there, which is, which is kind of unique. Now it does, to me, it gives me an issue with my grip. I do a butterfly grip. And the reason I like the butterfly grip is because I, I like to kind of lock the, the bag in place. But with this, with this, Feel it just never stays locked. It's it's so fluid. So when I go to throw, the bag feels like it's still moving. It took me a while to get used to that. I did adjust. You know, typically you get a fuller bag. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We'll take this this um V3 infiltrator here, which is a fuller bag. It's so when I go to grip this, I grip it, butterfly it, like this. It, it locks in place. Nothing's moving. This bag is solid. Nothing's moving until I let go and throws. Everything stays in place. But grabbing this. Like it's still not locked in place. There's still movement there. So if you don't like a bag that has a little bit of movement in your bag swing in your throw, this is probably not an option for you. It just it just doesn't stay there. That being said, this movement and fluidity of this bag makes this bag extremely hole friendly. I think it really helps the hole friendliness of it. So it's a trade off you've got you got you're looking at there. Um, and we'll get into playability. I'm talking about it. So playability wise, this bag does have some bounce to it. And the, the stickier the boards, the more the bounce you're getting. So the bag wants to hit. It wants to kind of walk up the board. Reminds me a lot of a BG Viking, uh, the way it hits and wants to walk up. A little, It's almost a faster version of a BG Viking, kind of in a way. Not quite as full, but a faster version. Um, it, it, it's great for throwing cut shots, throwing rolls, you know, getting around bags. Does an awesome job at that. 
But if you're not a flat bag thrower, it's going to punish you because if you don't come in flat and, and I have a tendency when I'm starting to get tired or losing a little focus that, that my bag doesn't come out as flat, has a little bit of wobble to it or a little bit of a lean to it. And when it did that, this bag really wants to hop and move. It wants to kick. Um, and what was frustrating for me is there was a lot of times where I, I, the bag was just off center. I, I would just be off, you know, right or left. Most time I was off to the right a little bit. And what happened because the bag was walking, it would hit. And, and whereas a little bit faster bag, more forgiving bag, would slide up, grab the whole spin around and melt and set there. This bag, because it has that movement, it would, it, would, it would hit the board and just skip right over the hole and go right off the back of the board. Very frustrating. I even had one where I threw it perfect right down the middle, went right down the middle. And because it had that hop and skip, it just perfectly hopped and rolled and flipped right over the middle of the hole. And, and, and I, I, can't remember if, I think it went off the back of the board, if I remember right. Extremely frustrating. So this bag does punish you. If you're a little off, it's not a forgiving bag. However, if you do grab the hole with this bag, it's going in the hole. It just, at this this fluidness of this fill, it just melts right in the hole. It really does. I don't think I had many bags, any that I can remember, where it, it, it got in there and just hung halfway in the hole. If it didn't go in the hole, it's because it was barely in. But if it started going, it went in. It fell in very, very, very hole friendly if it does grab the hole. I had quite a few that kind of caught, spun around, and just went right in. Beautiful. But I did have a lot more that just skipped right over the right over the side of the hole, which is frustrating. So it, it it's forgiving, but it's it's not forgiving, but it's hole friendly. Kind of so, and usually if a bag is hole friendly, it's very forgiving too. So this is this is a very unique situation where it's one and not the other. Um, it's also not a great bag for collecting. Like you can throw blocks because it is sticky. It will throw a block. But what I found is when I went to collect, because this bag walks, if you if you land it like a normal push shot, it tends to want to hop over the side or kind of kind of hit and flip and kick or or even roll over. Um, it it will get around the bag more than it should, um, which makes it great for. If you're playing an opponent who has a sticky bag and plays that dirty style game, this is where it excels. It excels at getting around their bags, leaving their bags, making them collect their bags. Now, if I did have a blocker up and I found if I wanted to collect it, what I had to do was land my bag a little deeper in the board, bring this collect, this push bag, and land it right behind the back or even almost on, on top of the back edge and just hit, and it would, it would take that bounce out and would just push both bags in. So it, it is you can collect the bag. You just have to know that you've got to land it a little deeper to be more consistent with it. But again, it, it, faster boards, it doesn't hop and bounce and, and move as much as it would on the stickier boards. So if you don't want that and you play on faster boards, or if, like I said, if you play an opponent, if it, where I would pull this bag out is faster boards and I'm playing an opponent who wants to put bags in the way all the time, and I just want to go around them and not have to worry about trying to go through them. That's where this excels. This is also a better game style bag. It doesn't shine real well playing by itself. You know, it doesn't it doesn't shine as well as it would in competition. It's not like a great ghost cornhole bag or a, a deck around type bag. It's really a competition style bag. It's a good bag. I enjoyed it. I love the way I love the way it melted in the hole when it caught the hole. I really did lo love that. I was frustrated the way it kind of hopped over the hole on times. Um, it, it's a it's an easy bag to roll. So if you're looking to roll or you do you roll bags, this is a great roll bag type option for you. Um, and, Oh no, it's a solid bag. I enjoy throwing it. Just know that if you don't like bouncy bags, if you don't like bags that if you if you don't like bouncy bags and you want bags that run true, true like you don't have a flat bag, you don't like bags that kick, this is not the bag for you. But if you throw a flat bag or you like to roll the bags or you don't mind a bag that bounces or walks up, you know, you're a, you're a Viking or a Combat or a Neptune or, you know, even like I said, OG2. So you, you throw that type of bag. This is a great bag that's just a touch faster on that slow side. Um, than, than those bags are. So check them out. Uh, these bags run $110 plus shipping from Kill Shots. The problem is right now there's a pretty high demand. They're not really available. Kill Shots, go check out their website. You can get on their text alert list. They'll shoot you a text right as they're releasing bags. And if you jump on immediately, you can grab a set. So if you fall in the categories of, of what I mentioned there and, and you kind of like the style of bag, if you can find them for the $110, yeah, go ahead and get them. I, I, think, I think they're worth that. I wouldn't pay the crazy secondary prices out there right now because I, I, I do wonder as Kill Shots makes these more readily available and as the newness of this bag wears off, that the prices will become back to normal. So thank you guys for the support and I thank you for watching.